Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today is a very special day because we're going to our first football match in South America since I've been down here. So today we're gonna to go to Vélez Sarsfield. They're playing against Platense. I've booked it through Airbnb experiences, so I'm not really sure what to expect, but I think it's gonna be an interesting experience. I'll be filming whenever I can, when I can. Hopefully in the ground, we'll see. Depends what the location is like, how scary slash dangerous it is in there. I'm sure it's gonna be fine though. They've said it's fine to take a camera in, so all good. I'm really, really, really excited about this. So I'll see you in Velez. Hey guys, Future Rob here. Um, I feel like this video needed a little bit of context. So I'm coming to you from the future with a little bit more information about what's going on here. So. One of the things I've been most keen to do in South America is to go to a football game. I think I've talked about that in previous videos. Um, I managed to finally do that through an Airbnb experience. I want to prefix that by saying this is not the only way to get tickets in Argentina. It seems to be a little bit easier than it was in Chile and Uruguay. Um, I believe you can buy tickets through the clubs. I'm not sure how that works being a foreigner. I tried it with Velez and it didn't seem that easy to be honest but um, you can just go and buy tickets on the day from the club um, but I chose to go through Airbnb they promised an experience that you wouldn't forget they give you a ride to the ground they give you background info on the club they give you a match day experience and they take you into the ground in a group as well so I also feel like we need a little bit of information about Argentine football because here in Argentina, there's the big five. So you've got you got Boca, you've got River Plate, Independiente, Racing Club, and San Lorenzo. Vélez Sarsfield are considered the sixth biggest club. They've won 10 Argentinian titles. The most recent was in 2013, so 10 years ago now. And they won the Copa Libertadores in 1994. So they're one of the biggest Argentinian clubs and they play at the Jose Malfitani, which holds just under 50,000 people. But yeah, I think the video just needed that little bit of context to kind of introduce you to what you're gonna see from Velez. So. He's <laughs> behind you, like, you joking, funny guy. And that's the original um, logo of Velez Santo. And the football club try to help the people. Yeah, he's done a wonderful while. Well, we, we have to go to uh, the gate number 16. 16, okay. Oh. Oh. Oh.
welcome back to me again in the future. I recorded a reaction conclusion to last night's events when I got home at like 1.30 in the morning. Uh, it didn't really come out that great, so I thought I'd just do it now. So my main takeaway from going to watch my first Argentinian game was that the fans in the stadium are just incredible. It's worth going to an Argentinian match just to experience what the fans are like. It's just... Now, I've been to games in Chile in the past three years ago, and I went to the Colombian Cup final three years ago as well. And the fans there were... The fans there were impressive. Um, these guys last night, they they were on the same level. It wasn't the same as the Colombian Cup final because that was crazy. There's another video on the channel. I'll link it in the description below. You can see how wild that is in Colombia. Um, but these fans were amazing themselves. There's just there's a main block of fans behind the goal to my right, where you can see the, there's a, a block of fans singing and there's a band playing. They just never stop singing all night, and backed by a band, they never stop playing with the drummers and the brass section just all night. It was impressive. Um, you don't really get that English games because. My experience of going to English matches is that the home fans are typically quieter and the away fans make the noise. So the away fans are usually rowdy and they kind of provide the atmosphere. But in Argentina, there are no away fans because the government banned away fans from attending football matches around 10 years ago. So one of the guys that took us last night, Mariano, he was telling us that there was a murder around 10 years ago at a football match and as a result of that the government banned any participation from away fans. I believe there's one or two matches every season where fans are allowed but other than that you won't see any away fans. So last night 100% Velez fans and you could tell at certain times when Platense were on the attack you could just not hear anything. It was really strange um, and especially when they scored it just there was a brief second where you just thought, why is no one cheering? And then you realise there's no away fans. And um, that was strange. That was a strange experience. I, don't, I think it's the first game I've ever been to where there was no away fans. So that was a bit odd, but it's different, you know? They, they can't have away fans if there's going to be that kind of violence. So we also heard some interesting stories about the people. I believe they're called La Pandilla, the band in that section. And we were told that these guys are essentially a mini mafia. So they're part of a gang culture. They have full-time jobs that revolves around being a supporter. Take that how you will. Um, but I think that's a story for another time. I don't really want to get into kind of the political side of it but all I know is that they made the match entertaining and that's partly because the football itself wasn't great um, Velez were clearly the better side they played really well early on but then they had a disallowed goal which took about two minutes for the VAR to decide whether it was offside or not which seemed absolutely ridiculous it just took so long um, and I think that disallowed goal affected them a bit because they didn't really kick into gear after that but they did score just before half time a cross came in from the left and the striker kind of it looked strange from where we were because it didn't look like he should be able to score it from the height we were at but seeing it back I've seen the replay today and he jumps and heads he kind of floats it over the keeper it's a really nice finish a really nice kind of chipped header it was a really good finish um, so we thought they'd kick on after half time but that didn't really happen. They just didn't turn up the second half. And then that was probably that was probably aided by Platens basically being happy to sit back and play for a draw. But then Platens equalised that absolutely nowhere. It was basically, I think they had two shots so much. Um, but they scored a long range shot. This guy must have shot for like 30 yards. Um, and from where we were sitting, again, it looked really strange because the goalkeeper didn't dive, he didn't move towards it. Uh, he just basically watched it go in. So we were like, something must have happened there. 
and it turns out it did because I saw the replay today and it's a huge deflection off the guy straight in front of the keeper and just rebounded straight to the bottom corner so the keepers had no chance so they got a lucky goal and from there Velez just didn't really respond they didn't offer anything um, they weren't really helped by a fussy referee he wasn't great he didn't help the game at all there was a situation so I caught it in on my camera where Velez won a corner and he was fussing about people in the box like wrestling with each other when nothing was really happening and then he realises that oh maybe the guy taking the corner hasn't got it fully in the quadrant and he moved it about an inch and he was happy with it and then as soon as the corner came in he just blew straight away for a free kick you're like there's nothing wrong with that and it was just a really it's just indicative of a fussy referee um and the game just didn't flow from there but it eventually finished 1-1 and honestly the second half wasn't amazing but the main takeaway is that Argentinian football fans are incredible so if you can get to a game 100% recommend it these aren't two of the best teams in Argentina obviously Velez are way down the bottom of the league I think they're 26 out of 28 teams so they've had a poor start to the season and Platens were very negative but I know that some of the people on this trip with me went to San Lorenzo on Sunday and that's well worth going to so if you can go see one of the big five 100% do I also want to give a huge shout out to Mariano and the guys on his team for sorting us out through the Airbnb experience they all had a great knowledge of Argentinian football they took us into the club shop beforehand which is where I got this bad boy it's a beauty um, and they took us to some classic Argentinian pre-game food and they got us into the ground safely and they obviously drove us to the ground or like a few streets away from the ground and then drove us home as well I was with an Australian guy and an American guy and a Chinese girl who were all friends they, they drove us to wherever we wanted to go to basically which is amazing, it's a great service I will leave a link to those guys in the description I know they do games for all the big five, so if you want to go and watch Boca, River, San Lorenzo, you can go and watch them as well. They will sort you out with tickets if they can. Um, that's going to do the video for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this glimpse of finally seeing some South American football. Um, and yeah, it was my first taste of football in Argentina. I loved it. I'd love to go and see another game. If I can, go and see Boca or River. I'm not sure how possible that's going to be on this trip. But we'll see. Maybe I can. If you did enjoy this video, hit the like and subscribe button. And until next time, let's be out.